G'day guys, it's Calvin from the Cartoon Company in New Zealand. I'm working on a 1UZ VVTi, happens to be my own engine. I was working the other day and my AV, AVIS flap was not moving. I thought it was my wiring, I checked my wiring, that was fine. And over the next few times I've used it, it's been intermittent. Pretty much a good sign that the solenoid's stuffed. I'm not surprised. I see it all the time. It's a big cause of uh, VVTi engines lacking power down low. So what is it? It's a little vacuum solenoid. VSV, vacuum switching valve. I always get them with the loom because quite often they crack by the plugs. I did a whole video on the workings of the intake manifold and the AVIS flap is here. <laughs> Vacuum operated, there's a canister and there's stuff under there. This particular manifold is having the injectors removed and the, the manifold's going off in a job. So I'm swapping that out. As a result, perfect opportunity to show how hard and how much of a pain in the backside removing the intake manifolds is on a 1UZ. Because they're so hard. When you hear people like that, tell them to harden up. Let's get that manifold off. I want to put a new valve in it. Flick those injectors out. Strip the manifold down. So enough talking. Time for working. Ready ho! Rattle gun. We might start, we'll get this throttle body off. Now I'd already taken the loom off this engine. That took me just on 12 minutes. Right, throttle body's off. That was easy. Then we're going to go, oh look, this, this bracket's a bit of a pain, but we can get past it. <coughs> Take that one off, we go down here. <coughs> Gonna leave that sitting in place. <coughs> that one's sitting in place. <coughs> okay, that's all good. Of course, with the loom, it is a bit trickier. And then we're going to go down in here. And I've put a fuel pressure sensor in the way, so we're just going to very carefully <coughs> take that one out. That's good. We're going to go over here at the back. <coughs> yep, good. We're going to go there. <coughs> that bolt there, down the center, there's a bolt there. <coughs> and over here, there's a bolt. Now, if you're doing this at home, <coughs> They can get a bit of buildup of crud, crap, all along the sides of the manifold. So please blow that out. Okay, so we've got that all undone. Um, I'm wondering what else is really needs to be done. Of course, the loom was off, but that was, wasn't too much. Um, I'm just really delaying and taking a bit of time here to check that I've undone everything. Oh, of course, if you're in a factory car, you'll need to undo this bolt here. They can be a bit ugly if they've been clamped up really tight, but undo the fuel out of it. So we're good. And you might have some water here. So you have to get some long nose pliers into the throttle body. So but that's still not too difficult. Um, and I've been stuffing around long enough of course, now we take the manifold off. I really need a little ladder to get these out. Oh, mate. That was so hard. I wasn't even timing it, but I don't even think that was five minutes. Intake manifold off. 
shows that guys that are doing this, who think it's hard, just need to rethink, put a positive spin on it. In a vehicle, that is probably about a two hour job, because there is a bit more stuff in the way and it's a bit tighter. And this is why I prep my engines before they go in cars, because it's so much easier to do it on the bench than when it's in the car. Righto. So what have we got in there? Oh, time for the vacuum cleaner. A starter motor. That was easy to get to, wasn't it? Intake manifold gaskets, the little piece there at the top. Underneath the intake manifold is the vacuum canister and the VSV. So let's change that out. <coughs> Take the canister off. <coughs> Woo! <coughs> and we've got the vacuum lines coming in. Vacuum hose off. There's a little screw. Vacuum line off there. So paying attention, the vacuum to the solenoid was on the outside one and to the AVIS flap actuator is on the inner one. And you heard there was still vacuum in the box. We take the solenoid and we throw it away. We get the new one. Okay. So I've got the old solenoid out and we can test it. No clicking. No clicking. So that one's stuffed. With the new one. Woo! You listening? There's a clicking. That's what they meant to do. That one, not so much. Right, oh, let's uh, pop this back in there. So it just slips in like so. Screw in the bottom. Vacuum hose on. And we'll pop it in place before putting the other vacuum hose on. There's a little clip on there for the vacuum hose. And the one to the actuator goes closest to the plug. At this point, we pretty much do the reverse of what we did to take it apart. Put it back together, do up the bolts, put everything back on. Very, very easy. And it's something now that uh, pretty much, unless the engine's done very low Ks on the VVTIs, I'm putting a new one in. I'm seeing it enough that it kind of warrants it. Until recently, it was about a 50% hit rate. And I actually think that a lot of these engines are coming out of cars because they lack bottom end power because of a simple solenoid. Bonus for us, not so good for the people who are getting rid of them. I've got to strip this manifold now, and the lower half's going off to another job. So I hope that was helpful, and we'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later.